This is the untold story of an innovative team going beyond its law enforcement duties to step into the realm of mental health. Beyond the Beat, a day with Phoenix Police Department's crisis intervention team. It seems like this happens over and over again, Dr. Drew. We miss the warning signs. The warning signs are missed. I'm Allie Vetner. Mental health is a serious and widespread issue. One in four people suffer from a mental health condition. I had the opportunity to go on a ride along with Phoenix Police Department's crisis intervention team, a team that is essentially leading the nation in this program. The crisis intervention team is a concept that started in Memphis. It brings together um, as many pieces of the community as you can get. So police generally, um, the behavioral health system, hopefully advocates, family members, consumers, um, and then you know, ideally a crisis system and as far out as we can reach to stakeholders. Sabrina Taylor with the crisis intervention team illustrated to me what their goal is. They're responding to these mental health calls, but they know that these sworn police officers are not doctors and they're not medical health professionals. Rather, they're just responding to these calls and leading these people to the proper resource. So if an officer goes out to a call and they don't have any resources to help the person with behavioral health, officer will, will try to resolve the situation for that moment, get everybody calm, and then they're going to leave. But they didn't really give them the treatment they needed. So now, like you said, they'll go back out again later that day, later, a few hours later, a couple days later, because the person is continuing to have that, those issues that they're dealing with. Mental health disorders are an invisible disease. Sabrina told us about how hard it can be for the team to identify if someone has a mental health disorder to begin with. We took one person to um, a psych center and you would have sworn it was a psych diagnosis. She jumped out of a car on the I-10. Um, Phoenix DPS and an off-duty ICE agent corralled her on the freeway. She was talking about um, the FBI, about alien invasions, and we went to one of these psych facilities. Turned out she had the flu. The fever was making her hallucinate um, and as soon as they got her to a hospital and got her fever down, she was fine. Wow. How are you supposed to know? <laughs> The first call that we went on was just a sad situation. He was a Vietnam War veteran and he was wounded in war and he was telling his doctor that he no longer wanted to live and that he had no reason to live. When we say things, sometimes people don't know how to read that. You know, it might be just you venting. Sometimes it's somebody that's actually very serious. And so when you're talking to somebody and you say things and they don't know how to interpret that, it concerns them and they have an obligation and a duty to report yeah. kind of thing for your own protection. Come to find out, his wife is now suffering from memory issues and starting to forget his name and not recognize him. And as Phoenix Police's crisis intervention team comes to his house to come get him and connect him with resources, they're also providing aid to the wife. They give her their business cards and tell them their names and say, if you have any issues, please contact us. How are you doing today? Good. Okay. What's, what's going on? I'm reporting you, okay? Okay. Don't step on my property. You gotta step on your property. Don't step on my property, sir. What's the what's the issue? Phoenix Police released body cam footage to KTAR of crisis intervention teams Detective Toth and Detective Ortiz. Back up, sir. I'm feeling threatened you right now. You have the no. legal right to I, take him into custody. I don't want to have to I'm confused. Hold on. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. That's why I want to take a moment to I'm explain confused. to you. If you stop and let me talk. I have a nervous. Uh, I have a nervous system breakdown right now, and you're you're causing me a nervous. Can you back up, sir? I'm not gonna move. You won't move. We'll stay right here, and I'm gonna talk. I'm scared. I don't want you to be. Look, scared. I'm shaking, bro. This footage shows how a person can be very agitated and uncooperative at first, but with patience and good communication, they can end up being very compliant. So here's why we're here. You have a petition. A petition is a legal document like a warrant, only you're not in trouble with us. You're not going to go to jail. Yeah. But it is a legal document that is signed by someone who has the power of a judge. It's so nice, man. Last time it was all different. They, they beat me up. They tackled me. Don't want to do that. Huh? 
You don't want to do that. I wasn't there. Uh, Brenda was there, Claudia. We want you to understand what's happening. We want you to be calm. Last time they didn't. Last time, good. last time they attacked me, they didn't explain it to me like this, sir. That's why I'm on the edge. I'm like, I got you. I'm like, oh, I got you. I'm like a Rottweiler. I'm scared. You. you respected your space. Yeah, you huh? did. You did. Thank okay. you so much. Right. And I respect you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. We try very hard to want to help people. That's why we're in this job, is to help our community and to help even uh, those who are sometimes more difficult to work with and to help. We give it our, our best to uh, give them the resources they need. Mental health disorders, in this situation in general, it's complex. It's a complicated issue. But Phoenix Police, they're doing things right now to better address it. They already have 300 police officers who have taken a 40-hour training to better address mental health calls, and in addition to that, they're implementing mental health training down at the police academy. I believe we've saved a lot of people's lives through the work that we do. We've talked a lot of people off ledges, uh, uh, parking garages and overpasses, and talked people down from having a gun in their hand or knives in their hands. There's a, there's a lot of great work we do. What this looks like in a tangible sense to me is a mental health professional riding in the car with, with one of our two crisis intervention team squads, or take it a step further, riding in a patrol car with our patrol officers, sitting on our communication center, diverting calls from law enforcement that could go somewhere else. How do you how do you square putting a mental health professional in the car with an officer when you can't even have a two patrol mm. Uh, officers in one car. Because I'm trying to create the dynamic where I'm getting the right calls and the right people for the right reason. Okay. There, there are some times when we should not be responding to these mental health calls. So why not take that out of the equation, have the mental health professionals deal with that, give my officers time to deal with police work. Here's our top story. KTAR News, 92.3 FM, Arizona's news station.